I'm Joe Perez, and I'm going to be showing you the different agents that Collate has to offer to get more things done with your data. So let's jump in. AI is all the buzz currently, and today I want to talk about how Collate is leveraging AI agents. So really thinking about the concept behind agents as a mechanism to perform a specific task or action. So really thinking about how it can streamline workflows or replace existing manual processes in an intelligent and efficient manner. So what we're going to do right now is we are going to jump into our settings and our applications where we can see what agents are currently available. Collate offers three main agents, our Collate AI documentation agent. This is going to provide table and column level descriptions for your data assets. We also have our Collate quality agent, which is going to provide quality data quality test cases to your assets to help get that broad coverage and Last but not least, the Cole AI tiering agent it is going to provide the tier of your assets based on a number of factors. What I'm going to do is dig into several of these to demonstrate how they work. So I'm going to go into settings and services and databases. I'm going to go into my Redshift prod. And from this view, we can see those agents with the addition of our tag so we can actually see what's being done manual versus what's being done by Collate AI. So we see that some of these do have a split between tags and tiers and quality test. Again, just allowing you to better understand what's happening. If I go into my agents tab here, I do wanna call out that our sample and auto classification agent also leverages AI. This is going to tag your data as sensitive or IP addresses or non-sensitive or date times and different elements and aspects as such. And then of course, if we go here, we do have those different data quality agents, tiering agents and documentation agents also present. So just really giving you that bird's eye view of what's feasible and what's possible. What I want to do now actually is click into what this looks like to review a couple of these agents. So starting with this customer table, if we go here, we actually see where these suggestions are being made. Now, Colway can either suggest descriptions or suggest tiers, or it can automatically set if empty. That is a configuration that is up to you to set and configure. Let's first talk about that documentation agent and see if I go here, I do have a number of descriptions, but let's actually see what Cole AI documentation is going to suggest on some of these that were empty. So if I look at these two, most recent order and number of orders. So if I were to ask you, what is the most recent order? I would probably get, hey, Joe, it's the last order that a customer placed. Yes, I think that makes sense. Okay, fine. Or if I were to copy and paste most recent order into ChatGBT, I'd probably get something similar. Now, let's take a look at what Collate AI documentation agent suggested. What we've defined here is the most recent order column indicates the date of the customer's latest purchase, helping to track customer engagement. Now let's take this apart. The first thing I want to call out is the date. Notice how we didn't say it's the last order or thinking about numbers or elements like that. We specifically associated this column with the date field. And if we look over to our left, we do have that date type present. So again, we're not just looking at the name of the column, but we're also looking at the column type. As we continue to read this description, we also see things like customer's latest purchase. So we know this is about customers. We also can see that it's helping track customer engagement. So again, this isn't just looking at the column name and the technical type but it's also looking at the other fields in this table. So looking at the schema at large, 
We have a customer lifetime value. From a lineage point of view, we have it feeding a number of dashboards or the queries that are we're using also indicate that this is for customer loyalty and customer engagement. Again, giving us really good insight here to what the purpose of this column is. Similarly, we can see that in number of orders with customer loyalty, as well as some of these other fields as well. Super important, it gives us a full rich context for the purpose of this table of, or of this column, going above and beyond just the column name, but really pulling together all your metadata elements. If you like this description, you can check it. If you dislike this description, you can reject it. And again, we can set these automatically if they were blank. So that's our Collate AI documentation agent. The other agent we want to call out is my personal favorite is the Collate tiering agent. So let's say you have 20 people on your team and you have 20,000 tables. How can you manage all 20,000 tables effectively? Well, you distribute them 1,000 tables per team member. Now, what we're probably thinking is that's not a scalable solution. And you can't possibly treat all 20,000 tables as equal. So what do you do instead? The best thing to do in this case will be to assign priorities and tierings. Just like you have tier one and tier two applications within your infrastructure and within your ecosystem, your data should be handled the same way. Now, if I click on this collate tiering agent, notice how it's suggesting it's tier one. Because what this is doing is it's looking at our lineage, it's looking at our queries, it's looking at our usage and popularity, and then it's suggesting what this table should be based off those factors and then assigning that tier. Because sometimes the hardest part is actually understanding the level of importance that these objects have. Our collate tiering agent makes this super easy and super simple. The other ones that we have was the auto classification. That's where we're getting things like sensitive and things like person or non-sensitive information. So our auto classification agent is being able to tag these as such. So we see that it was tagged as sensitive based off of the automator application. So just really thinking about different ways we can leverage the classification agent in addition to the documentation and tiering agent, how this auto classification agent works that's providing these tags is it's not just looking at the column name, but also the data and the structure of the data. So let's say you have a column titled ID and that column looks like the data in that column looks like this three digits dash two digits dash four digits. Our auto classification agent is intelligent enough to say, hey, this looks like a social security number based off the format, based off the data present, based off the column name ID. Let's tag this as sensitive. Again, removing a lot of that manual burden, reaching that governance criteria and performing those actions and operations. And then the last one is from a data observability front, we're able to add data quality test. So I haven't ran any of these, but these are actually showing, hey, let's have some not nulls for customer ID. Let's look at the relationship or make sure that custom values are unique for numbers of orders and first and last name. Didn't run these just to show easy and identify from the video, but again, Super, super important that we're able to get that broad coverage, especially for something like customer ID. It's nice to have a not null check as well as maybe a uniqueness test. So again, just ways we're able to help you get to that data quality coverage that you're aiming to. And again, you can review this all at the service level by seeing what's been generated by AI, what's been done manually and being able to track that.